Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the We Got Us podcast, where we are committed to bring ideas of innovation and excellence towards the next generation. Today, we have a very special episode today with Mr. Addison Brazil. Learn how to say that just now. <laughs> Vice President, Founder, and Spokesperson for Tether for Men. How are you today, sir? I'm good. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. Yeah, a lovely sort of rainy day in Vancouver here and Addison's coming live to us from Toronto, is it? Yeah, Toronto. Yeah, I'm back home in the hometown visiting the birth of Tether. The birth here. of Tether. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah, so I guess to give our viewers some context, please tell us about Tether in your own words. Yeah, of course. Um, so I'm one of the co-founders of Tether, which is a men's mental health and well-being platform. Uh, right now, it shows up in the Apple App Store and is downloadable. Our completely free app. Um, And really Tether seeks to create a balanced and boundary driven environment where men can come and not only support each other, but be supported Mm -hmm. and live within that balance and uh, work towards living more happy, connected and fulfilled lives. Mm -hmm. So obviously um, you didn't just one day think I'm going to start an app, right? Like I think it's really interesting to be like, how does one go from, um, the generation of an idea to execution. Can you give us like the condensed version of that? How did you guys, how did you and the other founders go from, this is something I thought about to, when did you guys launch again? The Yeah, uh, so the app there? itself launched in June. Tether as a company is just over a year old. Uh, yeah. And it was founded, um, our, our, our lead founder, uh, Matt Zerker, uh, he founded it. And um, it's interesting, we all have sort of different avenues into why we ended up at wanting mm-hmm. to do this um, yeah. through our own life experience. Um, Matt, for instance, uh, was doing very well, uh, uh, had a high-end finance job, lucrative, mm-hmm. owned his home, um, and yet he just wasn't happy. He, um, he, he was really struggling with his mental health. He was grieving the loss of a, of a friend, and uh, he found himself at a men's um, mental health group retreat and um, had a very profound experience and it, and it really affected him. And, and right during that time, I actually, myself, I, I um, in my 20s, I, I lost uh, my brother to cancer. I lost my father and found him after his suicide. And um, a few years later, um, I was in a fatal car accident that killed a dear friend of mine and left me mm. relearning to walk. And honestly, at that point, just makes sense of what it means to be here and be a man and I know, you know I drop for a sec addison yeah uh, so that was in your 20s and how old are you now if you don't mind me asking oh yeah no um i am one day shy of 32 oh wow i, uh, I turned yeah, this is like uh let's Saturday. release this episode tomorrow then it could be like a little birthday present for all your yeah, there you go all your friends yeah, <laughs> yeah please yes, continue I, I guess it is my birthday week, but yeah, yeah. So I'm 32. Um, so about a year and a half ago, um, you know, it really just Matt and I went to high school together, actually, and which high school? Posted it, uh, Etobicoke School of the Arts. Well, shout out to Etobicoke. So yeah, <laughs> I yeah, went to so Ryerson both... for context, so I, I have a general understanding oh, of uh, awesome. uh, the GTA. <laughs> yeah. So we um and we we have a connection to Ryerson too. We we uh, did their incubator program. Um, oh, amazing. Yeah, uh, yeah, we both went to ESA, which uh, for those of you don't, that don't know is an art school here in Toronto. Everybody comes from sort of all over the GTA. You audition to get in and everybody has a vocation or a mer- uh, major um, that they focus on. So uh, Matt and I went to high school together, but we were never very close in high school. And then we didn't you know, keep in touch obviously after. And he posted a status about his, um, about his loss. One of his very good friends passed away. One of the only men he felt like he could really talk to and connect to. Yep. And I just, I, I saw the status and I remember going, oh, he gets it. Um, mm-hmm. And I was grieving myself, compounded grief at that point and going through my recovery from the accident. And, um, and I just reached out and said like, hey, you know, if you need to talk, I know this is weird, but I'm here and, you know, and, and he did, he wanted to talk and we, we kind of connected and um, we started sort of being this beta of, of what Tether is now, where we were going back and forth and, and having this peer support relationship where we both had coaches, we both had therapists, we both were doing like, you know, all modalities of trying to, you know, feel good and thrive. Uh, but we found so much value in this, in this sort of peer relationship of being in it together while still mm. both independently sort of um, exploring and navigating the mm. mental health journey of a man in his 20s. Um, 
yeah. sprinkle in some trauma and you know that's yeah. just to double the fun right so yeah. um so i was actually um uh, doing a lot of consulting and um coaching at the time and um matt matt kind of came to me with tether and uh you know what i was like i love it man uh 100 i just i have so many people that come to me with ideas and yeah. if if it's kind of like at a phase two i will consult i will like put yeah. all my power behind it I'll, I'll do whatever whatever you can do and you know matt matt's mad and matt came back a few months later with our two other co-founders um who are on the product and tech side burke and denny um who are are less front facing but really the only way we exist uh so yeah. they're they're the champs yeah. of the tech side of the app um yeah. we're getting close they, to christmas right so you need santa claus as well as you need the elves <laughs> right <laughs> exactly. <it> <laughs> exactly. well I, they might be santa and mrs claus and me yeah and absolutely, we, absolutely we don't know right interchangeable um, brother <laughs> yeah, exactly um but um but yeah, uh, they, Matt came back and, and I just wanted to get involved in any way that I could. And I thought I was just going to sort of consult and put um, my Addy Connect power behind what he was doing. <laughs> and an hour turned into a day, which turned into a week, which turned into me becoming uh, the final uh, and fourth co-founder. Uh, and, I, and I kind of took on at that point, they had the product and they had the basic brand. Uh, and then I, I came on to build that and build the community around it. And yeah. now I oversee and over look at really anything um, from the brand and impact standpoint. So basically I kind of explain that as the relationship Tether has wherever it shows up, whether it's through merchandise, podcasts, yeah. uh, events like we had last night uh, on yeah. the app, especially of course, um, yeah. and just guiding that journey and, and what it feels like to spend time with yeah. Tether uh, yeah. is kind of- Can I pause you what I look at. Sorry, Addison? Yeah. At its very beginning stages, um, full disclosure, I'm a part of the community, guys. You had sent out a little survey that asked, and one of the questions in the survey that really struck me was, if mm -hmm. uh, if Tether was like a friend, how would you describe mm -hmm. that friend? And mm -hmm. obviously, we've gone, we, the community, have gone through a couple of iterations since June. How do how would you answer that now? Um, pretty similarly to the way uh, we did, but we, you know that that's one of the exciting things about building a brand is finding that voice, you know, and and how you're going to show up. And and we all agreed really quickly that that tether wasn't meant to be like some old man on a rock like kind yeah. of saying wisdom down to <laughs> you know those who learn um yeah. which which happens a lot in in um in that space um and so i i would say you know it's it's from those original surveys too which is so cool but it is it's the every guy it's the best friend and and i love our co-founder burke you know he, he uses samwise from um lord of the rings as an example <laughs> or, or ron weasley it's 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 that best friend that is willing to go the distance with you even if they're not like necessarily the hero it's just yeah. like hey this exists and i'll introduce you to all my friends and yeah. then we'll kind of figure it out together and that's yeah. how we kind of yeah i think it's super, super beautiful that you reference those two characters because what they do is essential to the end product for the completion of the mission of both of those of narratives but mm -hmm. none either of them required any credit right any, right. I think that's a good transition towards, um, I think towards the next subject, like something that we both discuss and that we both stand for is like the term I like to, that I've seen floating around a lot is like modern masculinity, right? Mm -hmm. Like it mm -hmm. says on your t-shirt right there, we F with feelings. <laughs> <laughs> Get your merch, I'll, I'll put a link in the- Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but I think it's a real paradigm shift that we're living through. Like there's also cultural shift that, we we as men are allowed to feel right i think that like you and i exemplify that every single day both in person and on social media and on any stage that we are have granted the opportunity to present ourselves right but um mm -hmm. how do we how do we get more men to shift from if they choose to shift from that traditional masculinity towards um yeah modern masculinity you know i think what we've learned uh, and I continue to learn every day is, is that's, it's really a practice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I like to think of Tether as sort of as a brand, not necessarily just the app, but as a brand, every, every experience, whether you're, you read our blog or on our Instagram, whether, whether you're a man or not, mm -hmm. um, you know, as an arena to practice 
courage and practice vulnerability like that's that's really yeah. what it is and and it is practice and and so part of the fun of my job is going you know what's the lowest barrier to entry to get a guy one step forward and so for some guys like you'll remember um on mondays i, I always do one word check-ins yeah. you know and that's a perfect example it's like let's just start with one word let's just start with identifying feeling the power of one deep breath so many men don't know the power like to reset your day yeah. to reset you know whatever you're going through these yeah. things um that i sort of picked up in my journey and then sort of started doing subconsciously i get to go back now and go like that was huge for me. Yeah. I mean, just breathing, the, the one thing we do, you know? So I think just just doing any little part and like, of course, like, I, as you know, I don't usually rock a mustache, but you know, the, <laughs> yeah. the, there are these ways to be involved to signal um, interest mm -hmm. or, you know, just yeah. just move towards the change. Uh, yeah. There's so much going on like that, that you can get what's, involved what's your, word, what's your word today, Addison? My what? What's your one word today? My one word. Um, well, uh, you know, I, I, I'll do. So physically, I'm feeling uh, tense. Um, um, mentally, I am. I'm clear, but emotionally, I'm tender. Oh, wow. um, is is nice. the way that that I'm sort of showing up right now, and and I love that you asked that. Thank you for allowing me to check in because sometimes, like like just. Like I, I felt the tension even start to release because yeah. I could label it, you yeah. know, and another man made it safe for me to do yeah. that. I mean, that's what it's all about, right? Yeah. And I think sometimes a lot of like both you and I are, I love your, your Insta bio. It says Addison creator and connector. And mm -hmm. I rep that shit SHIT as well. Like I, I feel the same way about my brand and my personality. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes personalities like ours people assume that we don't need to be checked in on but really right. we're the ones who need it a lot as well because we get exhausted from assist 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 but like mm -hmm. yeah, can we get some love back and that's why um, i was so passionate about the peer support idea is like you mm -hmm. know that's one thing matt and i every chance we get we say like we didn't figure it all out and like again we're not the guy on the rock with the wisdom <laughs> you know we're peers we're we're you know we're we're happy to go along in the journey with you but i gotta check in every day i gotta breathe i'm you know everyone's appear you know yeah, yeah yeah one of my signature sayings is uh you know i i like to acknowledge um my privilege i went to a private school a private catholic school from uh kindergarten to grade 12 here at um here in bc uh, st joseph the worker mm -hmm. and vancouver college so when i went to university i saw some different socioeconomical circumstances obviously at ryerson and i really developed a, a philosophy for myself it was um i'm never above or below anyone I always show up right mm -hmm. beside you and that was something I really had to work on in those especially those first two months of university because I was like wow this is different <laughs> you mm -hmm. know, like living I normal. love that I yeah. love that yeah just you know and nobody really is I mean even if you put doctor in front of you know they, they've studied more they have expertise in something but mm -hmm. but you know as fully feeling human beings we're all beside each other you know, yeah. there's no one really above or below. There's no experience that's lesser, more valid, right? So yeah. that's that's kind of the essence of it. That's, you know, it relieves us too. Like if, if you just agree to show up as a peer, there's a relief there. You know, yeah. I'm not showing up to fix everybody on Tether because I wouldn't yeah. even try, yeah. you know, because there's not fixing to do. It's just encouraging yeah. them to kind of honor the journey the way that I have. Yeah. That's kind of the way I think about it. And I think like fixing even puts a label on it. And I think what mm -hmm. you and I always say and like what it says on your, your shirt, like first step is just feeling. Mm -hmm. Are you, are you self-aware of as a man or even as like a boy, is we're not promoted or advocated to like discuss our feelings often, right? Be like, Hey, like, just, let's just, let's just label like, how are you feeling now? Like it was so often we get, you know, in North American culture, we get the, the like the, how are you? Right. But then it's, it's always just good and done. But like, at, what's really powerful if you can get to that level is like, how are you really doing? You know? Mm -hmm. And how are you feeling? Cause yeah, you know, you what, feeling? what does good feel like? <laughs> you know, and it's it's different and arbitrary for everybody. So it's like you know, I, I'm like that person now. That's like, and what does that feel like in your body? Because like I'm just like so interested because we just 
we we assume we all run from the same dictionary and and yeah. every day i learn whether it's in my personal relationships or my professional relationships we don't we have very different connections to different words and different phrases and and you know so we 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 think we're understanding each other and there's a total misconception about what the experience of the other person is you know yeah. so it involves a lot of active listening and yeah. and and questions questions yeah. what is that like for you what is the experience of that yeah. you know yeah. digging a little deeper yeah I absolutely love that. Um, seeing as we're both spending a certain amount of time in Toronto, our boy Drake once wrapped in a, <laughs> but when, once wrapped in a song, I think 2010 song, Find Your Love. Uh, he rapped, uh, you hear, but you don't listen. And that was when I first um, subconsciously learned of the term active listening. Is like, now I'm doing my master's in, mm -hmm. in counseling. So like, it's my job to be a, an right, active listener. But like, that was the first, as, when I was 18, I was like, damn, a lot of people in my life just like, are just hearing, they're not listening. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, and you know, people don't, and it's funny because I come from uh, the acting world and, and I also yeah. coached a lot. So, you know, it's like, the, like I go back to, you know, there's three types of listening, not listening, uh, active <laughs> listening, uh, which is where you're fully listening and perfunctionary listening, which we all tend to do, where as you're speaking, I'm thinking about what I'm going to say rather Over than those really one more listening. Time, not listening. Uh, so not listening. Yeah. Uh, then we have perfunctionary listening, which is where you're thinking about what you're going to say next while the person's mm -hmm. talking, which most of us do quite naturally. And that comes from, you know, a, f a fear of what if I don't know what to say by the time they finish, especially in a setting like an interview. Um, you know, a little bit of that, of course, is always great. Uh, and then there's active listening where you're dropped in, fully engaged, you know, making eye contact and really hearing what a person is saying yeah. Um, yeah. And, and listening into their experience. And uh magical stuff happens and i'm not saying it's easy again something that i you know it's a practice yeah. uh another thing that you kind of can join the tether community to practice because it, it's just like anything else uh, you know it's a muscle yeah i think repetition is key but also mm -hmm. what you said earlier when i asked you the check-in like the check-in question the opposite party also has to create that space where it's safe to mm -hmm. a x y and z Mm -hmm. and, like, and so I like to add like active and empathetic listening mm. because there's a sense to that you know um if, if you're coming at it with a sense of empathy or not um yeah. for sure and that 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 in itself kind of you know oh I'm being listened to and I feel a connection to somebody else that that sort of creates a safe space without the formality of it because sometimes the formality of it freaks guys out too you know so it's yeah it's yeah, like yeah. how can we do this in a way where we just show up as the safe space yeah for sure I think like uh, my, our goal within whenever the man above calls our name is like, our number is like how do a lot of men are slowly rely, like I've read a study once that like X amount of percent of men are only talk about feelings with their partner. And like the fact that the, our community of men can do that daily with, I don't know what number we're at of active members, but it's mm -hmm. definitely, definitely a step in the right direction. And yeah, like, so how do you think we can um, transform, not transform, manifest app to day-to-day con -day conversation? How do we make that shift? Um, well, you know, like I said, that there's a lot of, it's, it's back and forth, right? And there's a lot of, we think of Tether as the space, safe space where you can practice um having having deeper connections having real conversations um with people and then yeah the idea is to take that out into as you're comfortable and safe everybody in your life you know because it's as you're learning that in the app you're obviously going to transfer that into real life where when i when i set up a safe space by sharing and being authentic a, a greater connection is built much quicker and so you know that transfers in into real life and and being a little bit more uh, courageous and vulnerable with people right off the bat. I mean, even just doing this sort of thing, you know, yeah. it's a, a weird thing to think about podcasting, you know, it's like you hop <laughs> on and, and you dive in, especially like for me, I, I show up mostly as a lived experience expert and a mental yeah. health advocate. So it's like, you know, I'm always kind of diving deep into my own story and I never yeah. know what's going to happen. But yeah. what I've kind of learned is to just quit the pre game of it and just show up fully and yeah. drop in and sure enough there's always something to talk about and, and hopefully something of value you know yeah, absolutely, absolutely. um for sure yeah like this is episode 15 and in all honesty like the first like five to seven episodes i would do like seven hours of research 
just to be like, yeah. can I sustain a conversation at this level for like 30 to 40 minutes? But now um, I'm trusting of my instinct. I'm trusting mm-hmm. that sort of, of my mission and I'm trusting of my ability to, you know, relay these experiences, lived experiences that I've had and to trust that the other person can also, like, it's like uh, whenever you go lift furniture, right? If you go lift a heavy, if you go to Ikea and you try to lift some heavy ass couch, no matter what you do, you're going to need someone on the other end. So <laughs> yeah, it really comes no, it's true. Piece of that. Comes piece of and that. I think there's something about that, that allowing that flow for you mm-hmm. because your, your listener is, has the same, you know, intuition about what they'd like to hear next. And so mm-hmm. if it's too planned, then it's like, they don't know why, but it feels disconnected, you know, yeah. where it's like, obviously you'd ask him this from that, you know, or, or you know, yeah, that yeah, yeah. natural thought. Yeah, yeah, for sure um yeah that kind of covers the um, the meat and bones of our of our conversation but let's head into like the dessert slash lightning round here that i really really yeah, enjoy sure, man. <laughs> what's uh one idea that has uh, shaped you as a person the most idea that has shaped me as a person the most what a good question um thank you pat, pat on my pat on the back <laughs> i think honestly i say this all the time but uh letting go of good and bad right and wrong and uh just focusing on the truth uh it's oh, wow. it served me through my work no matter what i've done whether it's uh, on either sides of the creative world um or you know in brand work or how i show up as a, a speaker and a peer supporter um you know it's there's so much labeling and so much needing to define and measuring and comparing and 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 justifying and uh if you just kind of tap into the truth if you just are willing to find that gray middle, which is experience, you mm-hmm. know, is authentic experience. Um, everything just flows a lot easier mm-hmm. uh, than than constantly needing, you know, solid definitions and polarized yeah. opinions of everything. And to add on to that, I think it's really important to. I think a lot of times people get men, especially, get uh, attached to their ego, mm-hmm. and therefore they are so attached to like my idea needs to be the one that we take out of this meeting because I spent X amount of time on this where I I think martyr masculinity is all about actually let's all active listen what's the best idea like truth Mm -hmm. like when I hear truth it means what's the best idea in the room yeah true collaboration that that there was you know an opening for for something new to come in for sure Mm -hmm. Um, I always like to, whenever I ask this, I like to reflect upon it as well. I think, um, my idea that I've learned the best this week has been when something is in abundance and not scarce, then continue to use it as much as possible and to not Mm. think about the consequence. Like, um, I was helping a friend move, um, and we're, uh, we're unpacking some of his old boxes. And then I, I, he has, he's so intricate with each tape job on his boxes. And yeah, he just like, so I messed one up and I was like, damn, man, I'm, I'm, so, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Like, it, like I'll, I'll redo it. And he was like, dude, don't worry about it. Like tape is, there's no scarcity on tape. <laughs> and I was like, you're right. Okay. That took the, that took all the pressure off. Let, right. Let's do it again. Right. Let's do it. So if, if, if something's not, um, a limited resource like that like let's keep on trying yeah especially with love it's yes not yes. a limited resource <laughs> oh shoot yeah, it's knocked something over but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, love is in- love and caring is infinite brother mm-hmm. until someone uh takes advantage but we, we do not we don't have to go down that rabbit hole today <laughs> boundaries as well um second um rapid round question we have a segment called Teen Tip Tuesday here as our target demographic on the podcast is uh, high school and university students. Awesome. Hop in the time machine with me real quick here, Mr. Mr. Brazil. Um, 16-year-old Addison in Etobicoke. You are sitting across from him instead of me. Please provide him with uh, what you would tell him today. You know, I... I would be tempted to tell him about the loss that was coming, um, you know, to, to really, to really, you know, spend more time with my, my brother and my dad and, and, you know, um, be aware of how much my life was going to shift a little down the road. But, um, but to be honest, um, 
I, I wouldn't say much other than you got this because I, I wouldn't want to change that. I wouldn't want to go back and, and shift anything. Um, and I think if he could have carried that, knowing that no matter what, at this age, I'd be saying that with him, just, you know, honor the journey, dude, honor the journey. You know, that's, that's what I would say. And uh, I don't know if it would make sense to him or not, uh, or if he dismissed me, <laughs> he was a little, a little sassier uh, than I am now. Um, but, but, you know, just, just honor the journey and, and um, keep doing what you're doing because the relationships that that 16 year old cultivated uh, continue to support me fully and um, quite beautifully every day to this day. Absolutely beautiful. Thank you, sir. Um, if there's version two of the sweatshirt of the sweatshirt, I think we need to encourage putting a honor the honor the journey on some. Yeah, sort that's of, that's like my tagline. I know I always it, say that. That's that's, it, it. that's my book title. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll say if, if it's your book title, we don't need it on no sweatshirt. Yeah. Well, well, and it works. The emoji can be the O. And, but we, then we'd have we'd have like a brand crisis because do we do honor with the U or do we do it like yeah. with the, yeah. the you know, like, yeah. that is your problem and no not your problem <laughs> that, that, that's between you and the the co-founders I'm just gonna let you guys right. figure that out <laughs> cool man I really appreciate your time today um anything else you'd like to to add to the listeners Edison uh no I'm um, I'm accessible if anything that you've heard today or you want to hear more about um there's lots out there kind of every day on what we're doing but um. But I'm accessible, LinkedIn, whatever it is. Uh, if you yeah. want to get involved in the men's mental health and well-being journey, just yeah. find me. Of course, I'm on Tether, as you know, uh, for all the men out there. Yeah. So uh, just to be clear with the audience, you can find Tether on all the app stores. Uh, what other services? Like, so there's, there's the Tuesday group as well, right? So, like, can we let's talk about a bit about that before? Yeah. So nope. for yeah, yeah. So uh, we're on the app store Tether T E T H R, um, and uh, that's in the Apple App Store. Coming soon for Android. Um, and, uh, and then on all the platforms, we show up as tether for men, T E T H R for men. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, then we have on our website, tether.men, uh, mm -hmm. our content as well, which we have a lot of great blogs. We have a coach's corner, mm -hmm. um, tales that tether, which is the peer supporters sharing their, their journeys, uh, and just a lot of great resources that are being consciously curated. And right now when so much information is being thrown at you, if you're just looking for things that are consciously curated for your betterment and development, um, I strongly suggest checking out our content, which also now exists within the app, uh, which is very cool. Um, and then within the app, um, for anybody who's male identifying and wants to join the community, it's free. Uh, you set up a profile and you can come and connect with us and then from that we do do like you said digital events and programming a monthly kind of all in tether call like we did last night mm -hmm. and then every tuesday night there are um men's group facilitations for a little bit deeper work of guys who kind of want to all hop on and, and do that i absolutely cannot wait for a vaccine to be proliferated one only for like the sake of humanity but two so we can uh manifest this community that we've created electronically and i'd love to meet some of these people man It'd yeah man the, re awesome. the retreat yes yes i'll sign me up now you know <laughs> exactly yeah no it, oh. it's really cool that at a time when they said we none of us could travel or, and barely leave our houses that we've made mm -hmm. so many friends around the world it's it's really yeah. cool yeah i think like perfect perfect app for the perfect time and um on behalf of our community we thank you matt Burke and what's the last family? Denny, name? Denny, I, the man. I, I haven't met him yet. Sorry, I, I, I've spoken with everyone <laughs> the, else. The, the man in the shadows. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, I, I would extend the Christmas metaphor, but I don't know any other characters I could use. Exactly. <laughs> well, man, I really appreciate your time, and I'm sure we will uh, connect very soon, Mr. Addison. Thank you. Thank you so much.